Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Loom video. And this video is gonna be quite an interesting one. Um, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about designing faster in Figma, Figma shortcuts. And these are not like, you know, keyboard shortcuts. I'm not gonna talk about any keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna talk about hacks to design faster. Um, and before I sort of get started, let me give you like a backstory uh, or a sort of concept. One of the biggest reasons a lot of people might feel frustrated when designing interface is not because they don't know the solution, not because they don't know what colors and fonts to use, um, you know, not because they have a lot of screens to design. It's just that designing one screen, making it pixel perfect, which means making sure that it's exactly how it's supposed to be, just takes a lot of time. Right. And if you don't know how to design it faster, then it will get a lot frustrating because you will end up spending a lot of time with just a single screen when you could have designed six screens or 10 screens in that period of time. And I'm going to show you how you can design much faster and a lot of cool tips and tricks and hacks and a lot of hidden features that Figma has to, you know, design it. And you will start applying these things when you're designing your interfaces. Uh, you will end up saving at least five to 10 extra clicks and, you know, at least minutes of your time with something. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got a bunch of frames. Now the ones on the top is the other ones, which I'm going to use and show you. And the ones at the bottom are for you. So, so I've prepared it in such a way that you can just copy these frames put it into a separate file because I cannot give edit access to everyone. And then you can, uh, by the way, the link to the Figma is in the description of this video. So you can check it from there and then test it, play around with it. Try to do the same things that I am doing. Make it a part of your muscle memory. It should be obvious, right? It, it should be like, you, you don't even have to think when you're doing something, your hand should automatically do it for you, right? So let's go and sort of figure this out one by one. Okay. So the first one is selection of colors. Now, the use case here is that I've got a bunch of buttons over here. All of them have different colors um, and stuff, right? Now, let's say that in the end, I want to change all these colors from this green thing to whatever different colors that I want, right? So how do I do it? Now, obviously the ideal way is to go individually select and I've got fill and I've got strokes and all these things. But if I wanna change the global primary color from green to purple, let's say. How do we do it? Now, you can either select the entire frame that is containing these elements or just select the elements, sorry, or just select the elements yourself. And when you come down, you're gonna find something called as selection colors. These colors are all the colors that are a part of the selection, right? And now I wanna change this primary green to purple. So I'm gonna click this to unlink and I've got this primary green um, and I'm gonna change this to sort of a purple color. Right now, we might not be able to clearly see it, but I'm going to select this color, which is sort of this green and just change that to sort of a purple, sort of like a pinkish purple like this. Right. And that's, it. that's pretty much it. So I don't have to select individual elements. I just have to select the entire thing, go to selection colors and change it manually. So now I've got white as well as black. And I've got black here as well. So if I want to change the black to a different shade of black or a blue or whatever it is, I can just select it and do that. Now it also shows you two things. It shows you colors that are manually put, which is this and one that's a part of your text style, right? So you have that flexibility to choose. You want to change colors that have a textile applied or colors that have, that have been detached and are manual. Both of these are pretty much the same colors. White is FF, 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 same thing over here. Right, so you have that flexibility as well. Cool. Next, we've got something that people often use a lot of times. It's it's very it's very common. I'm pretty sure you would have already done this. Now here, I've got a bunch of things over here, and I sort of want to align them neatly. Right, I just want to sort of align them perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this, right? And first thing I'm going to left align everything. Right? So I'm going to click here to left align, right? And this is pretty much a common feature that you would have seen if you have used multiple designing tools. Um, and let's say I want to sort of change and I want them to e I want them to be equally spaced, right? I want them to be equally spaced without these, you know, these weird gaps. So I'm going to come over here on the top, right? And I'm going to choose tidy up. What that's going to do is that's going to equally space things out for me. Um, and the gap between all of these are going to be perfectly the same. 
right? And then I can sort of group it and bring it to the center if I want. Okay, next. Now let's say that we did the same thing over here. Let me just bring this to the center, okay? And I don't want the distance to be this much. I want it, I want a specific value or I just want to see what would be a good value to it. So rather than individually selecting the elements and moving them, you can select all of these. And once you tidy them up, you, you, you get this you know, option. I'm not really sure what it's called, but this value of 28 is actually the distance between every element, right? And I can actually, if, if I know what the exact value is, let's say I want it to be 10 pixels away, I can just type in 10 and it's going to move it 10 pixels away from each other. If I want to sort of figure out and figure out what sort of spacing I want and I don't know what exact number is, I can just, you know, use the arrow keys and see which number I like. And if I like it, then let's say I like 16 and I'm going to make it 16 and I'm going to group them and place them in the center, right? That's pretty much it. Moving on, this is something that's going to probably blow everybody's mind. Uh, it's one of my favorite features. Now, as you can see, the order of these are wrong. So I want them to be in the right order, which is one, two, three, four, five. So what you can do is select all of these elements and you have to tidy them up first, as we did in step number one. And then you need to choose, uh, sorry, you have to align them properly to the left align. And then you want to tidy them up so that they have equal spacing. And then once you're happy with the spacing and you just want to change the elements, scroll over the elements and zoom in until you see this purple, you know, these purple or whatever pink, um, you know, circles and dividers. These are things that you're going to use to change the order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select text one and I'm going to move it above over here. That's it. And as you can see, the distance is 16, which remains the same. And I'm going to do the same thing for this as well. So I'm going to take two, and then I'm going to take three and then I'm going to take four and then move it over here. It's as simple as that. It, it, it's so fast and you can do this with pretty much any element that have equal spacing. The condition is that this spacing should be equal, right? The next thing is selecting elements. Now, this is something that you're obviously definitely going to do. Uh, it's pretty sure that you're going to do this. Um, so what am I talking about? So we're going to do two types of selections. One is a single selection and one is a group selection. Now, if you look at this, we've got a lot of things. We've got an auto layout, which is a frame, right? Frame or a group. In this case, frame or a group is pretty much the same thing um, because both of them are invisible. There's no element, um, okay? And then we've got another frame over here for these two elements. I've got a group here for these two, right? And inside that group, I've got another frame over here and then I've got individual frames over here. So there's a lot of grouping that's happening. Now, let's say I want to select an element, let's say like this text, okay? Now I've not selected anything and as soon as I hover, I can't really, you know, tap on this. So I ideally have to go and hold down control or command if you're on a Mac and click on this element and you're going to select. What that's going to do is, as you can see, it's gone all the way down and selected the child most element. There's no element below uh, this text element. Now, the reason I'm teaching you guys this is if you ever want to select an element, never, ever, ever go to the layers panel and select the element. Never do that. That that will slow you down 10 times. Always select the elements right on the canvas, right? Now, let's say I want to select this text called overnight. I can do that, right? Now, I can't really select this border that we have. And the reason we can't select the border is because it's an auto layout. It's not a rectangle. It's, it's an invisible element. The frame or a group is an invisible element. You sort of can't, you know, really see it or touch it, okay? So... What if I want to select the word, you know, you know, uh, let's say I want to select this group, you know, this that says evening. How do I do that? Obviously is to sort of go and, you know, hover over here and then you select it. That's one way to do it. But then if you want to do it like a professional, it's very simple. All you have to do is select any other element on the screen. So in this case, I'm going to choose overnight. Okay. And then I'm going to hover on another element over here. Right. And now I can select this. So let's try that again. So I'm just, so let's say I want to choose overnight. I'm going to choose evening and then I'm going to hover on this and then I'm going to select this, right? So you select the element by not selecting the element. So by not selecting the element, I'm selecting this element and then I'm selecting this. Now, if I want to do the same thing and click on morning or afternoon, the problem is I can't do it because as you can see, this is a different group and these two are sort of different groups. Like these both are children. 
So if I want to select, for example, the afternoon, I can select the children of that. And that would be only this. So to give you a better explanation, we've got a main group. Inside that, we've got two elements. We've got this and then we've got this, right? So this is the parent. These two are the children, right? And for this parent, we've got two children, right? So first of all, if this is wrong, selecting becomes a problem. Anyway, so let's say I want to select, you know, you know, the word afternoon. So I select the word morning and then I click on this whole button that says the afternoon, right? Now that's one thing. Now let's talk about group selection. Now let's say I want to choose all these four groups. Okay. All these four groups. Let's say I want to choose all these four groups. How do I do it? So obviously I, I can select these two, but it's not working out. I'm selecting the entire element. So let me go ahead and ungroup this. Okay. So now we've got one, like if I show you, we've got, we've got this element, this element, and then I'm going to ungroup this because it's just a single child element. Okay. Now what I can do is I can select this entire thing, select the parent. I'm going to press ent enter on my keyboard. Okay. And that's going to do is that's going to select all the children elements. Now I want to go one level down and select only these four children. I'm going to press enter again. Right. And now it selects all these four elements, all these four elements. And now this is also being selected, right? So let's say we did not have this element for the case of this tutorial. And I wanted to select all these four elements, right? All I had to do was press enter, select the element, press enter to select its children groups, and then press enter again to select these four, right? So this makes it super fast. If, I, if, if you want to see how it, how it happens in real time, I can just select this, press enter twice, and I have all these four elements. And now I can add in sort of like any color that I want, right? Let's just add some, some green color. Something like this, whatever. Okay. So that's how you select children elements. Now, this is something that you will definitely do at least hundred to thousand times. So make sure you sort of master this. All right. Resizing. Now, this is again, a lot of things that uh, sometimes you end up doing. Um, and there are a lot of ways to fix it. So one way is to obviously change the width and the height of this. Now I've created an auto layout over here. And let's say I'm not really sure what the height or length should be. I'm just figuring out. I'm just seeing the exact spacing, right? Um, the other thing is to sort of use the handles and move them up and down, but how do you do it like a pro, right? And if you wanted to, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to be pixel perfect, where you just know you want it to be like 13 pixels to the right. If you want, if you, let's say you want the width of this to be 13 pixels more, obviously you can go here and type in plus 13. That's a solution or the right way to do it is to hold down control on your keyboard and then press the right arrow key. And if I zoom in over here, you can see it. All right. I'm going to press it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? That's how you want to do it. Now let's say that you want to increase it by multiples of 10, right? Let's say you want to increase it by 34 pixels. So you hold down shift as well. So when you hold down shift, you increase by multiples of 10. So hold down control and shift. I'm going to press once 10, 20, 30, and then I'm going to leave the shift and then just increase it by four pixels. One, two, three, four. So now it becomes 34 pixels and you can do the same thing for up and down as well. Um, so let's say you want it to be uh, 26 pixels taller. So I'm going to hold down control or command on my Mac and shift. And then I'm going to press the down arrow key twice. So one, two, and then since I want it to be 26 pixels, I'm going to leave the shift and then just press one, two, three, four, five, six times on the down arrow key, right? And this is how you sort of want to resize. You can do this for anything. You can do this for groups. Um, sorry, you can't do this for groups. You sort of have to do it for individual elements like auto layout or icons or text or shapes or whatever it is, right? So that's pretty cool. Something that's very interesting about resizing. Now images. This is going to be something that's very, very, very important. And the easiest way I'm going to say it is when you are a right-handed person, there's no point in eating food with your left hand, right? What is, what, what does that mean? Now I have an image over here. Okay. And I want to put this image inside this box. Now, let me tell you ideally how people are going to do it. Okay. So people are going to scale this image down. Okay. They're going to come over here and they're going to put it over here. 
all right and they don't really know if it's properly aligned they're going to select both the elements over here and then they're going to mask it this is how they're going to do it now let's say you want to change the size of the rectangle okay when you hover you can see all this extra unnecessary space because my object is just the rectangle how do i actually you know go and select only the rectangle like whatever i try if i try control or shift or option i'm not just i'm not able to select the rectangle for some reason because the image is over the rectangle so a nicer way to fix that is to use a cool shortcut so i have the image okay now the shortcut if you want to find out what it is you can right click come down over here and choose copy properties and paste properties these will be your shortcut so what you have to do is just copy with with the shortcut select the element and paste right that's it that's pretty much it how fast is that you select it right let let's do let's try to do that again right copy paste that's it that's it you you can't do faster than that that's that's pretty much it and if you come over here we've got a couple of options now let's say i want this entire image to fit so i can click on fit um let's say i want to crop it uh let's say i want to sort of choose the size so i can select the image and i can scale it over here let's say i let's say i want this bottom area uh this green area over here and then i can press enter right it's very simple okay so this is about images never use masking masking is a big pain in the ass always use this option now the other thing is let's say you have an image on your desktop and you want to bring it over here you can um let's say you know we don't um okay let me just undo everything so we get back the normal or uh, right um so i'm come over here and i'm going to choose image there is image and i can click on this image to open up my uh windows uh to window and i can browse and select the image and put it directly over here i don't really have to bring it to figma right so that's uh, another cool thing okay all right now this is something that's very very important and uh something that's that's definitely important and that's called symmetrical scaling um i'm i just made up this word i don't know what the real word is but uh anyway so as you can see here this is like let's say this is simple our iphone 10 and we've got our status bar and we've got the navigation bar over here now obviously as you guys know the navigation bar also should be like a big rectangle that is edge to edge right so how do we do it so obviously you select the two elements the ideal way you would do is to create some sort of a frame now i don't know how you guys create frames but i'm going to show you you know like a really cool way the first is to use a keyboard shortcut which is right clicking and choosing um frame selection which is um option command g for me i don't know what it is for windows users so do that first and as you can see that puts it into a frame and then you can hold down command on your keyboard and then just move this to the side move this to the side okay now you want to do the same thing over here as well because you want these two elements to touch each other now just for the sake of simplicity i'm going to add some sort of color to sort of give you guys an idea of what's happening okay now i'm going to hold control again and move this up now ideally i want the top and the bottom distance to be the same but the thing is i don't know how much i moved it up by right so instead of moving one if you hold down option and command right you can scale both of them at the same time and now you've got yourself a navigation bar right now here in this case let's say we need have to have multiple items and let's so let's move this 16 pixels to the left all right and now i'm going to frame this okay and i'm going to move this over here and i'm going to move this this from here to here okay and uh let's say i want the distance of each element to be around 16 pixels so if i want it to be 16 pixels um all right so, so for this case let's just make it 8 okay i'm i mean let me add another background color to this um right so i'm going to hold down option and command and scale okay and then now i can duplicate this and there we go this is how interfaces need to be sort of designed and you can do this even when you're designing landing pages where you want to um 
have a frame for every section of the landing page. The hero needs to be in a big section, right? And then you want the other section with the title and some description and everything. It's in the center, but it needs to be edge to edge. So you have to right click, you have to choose frame selection, and then you can use control if you want to increase only one of it or control and option or control and alt if you want to increase on both on the opposite sides basically all right anyway moving forward paste properties right this is pretty cool so here in this case um let's say that i want this button to look exactly like this button uh this has got a stroke and a white color background this does not have any stroke and it has the sort of uh, light teal color so we've already done this copy paste properties and paste properties so i'm going to copy this and paste very simple that's it you don't have to individually select this element and change the stroke properties and the fill and all that stuff super fast copy and paste properties now in this case um i want to copy only the drop shadow i don't really want to copy any of the other properties so ideally i would come over here and see the properties and select this element and then add the drop shadow and change all these properties multiple unnecessary clicks so what i can do is i can select this if i come over here to this empty gap i can click to select the drop shadow property control c and come over here and paste it right so now i've pasted that exact drop shadow property with this element now you can even select if you have let's say multiple drop shadows or even in your fill if you've got multiple fills you can select both by holding shift you can copy you can come over here and you can paste right but it doesn't paste it's pasting the properties of the frame and not the button right it's it's pasting only i mean the button text it's pasting only the properties of the frame so the button still stays the same color right so that's another cool feature next is opacity this i'm guess pretty much you all guys already know let's say i want this to be a disabled state um you can come over here and change the opacity and you can change over here but the fastest way is to press the number um on your keyboard so if you want to change it to 20% opacity press 2 end of story and you can change it to if you want it to be 45 press 4 5 on your keyboard very fast you change it to 45 if you want it to be 0 double tap 0 to get it to 0 if you want it to be 100% double tap sorry press 0 once right and it sets it to 100 so use numbers rather than coming and clicking and tapping many times so reduce the number of taps and clicks and that's how you going to and that's how you going to end up working faster okay um how many we've got we've got two more okay now this is something that's really interesting um and i'm sure you're going to face this a lot of times so here i've just got a simple auto layout with some text and you know it's it's like a quote now let's say somebody gave me this and pasted this on figma or you're copying this from the internet or wherever it is right or let's say figma let's not go outside figma and this has a different characteristics right this has a different color it has a different font weight uh let, let's make this 18 uh for example i'm going to make this 18 as well um okay um it has a lot of different properties and in this case i i like this design but i just want to change the text i just want to change the text so if i copy this and paste it's going to paste all the properties so how do you paste the properties without you know uh, how do you paste the text without pasting properties it's very simple um i'm not quite sure what the um shortcut in windows is but i'm guessing it is so on mac it's command shift v instead of pressing control v you hold down shift and do it so i'm guessing on windows it's going to be control shift v right and that's going to paste only the text and not any of the properties right so that's another cool feature now here this is again something i see a lot of people having problems with um, and this remember works only with frames only if you have a frame will it will it work or else it's it's not going to work right now let's say i have this card like this banner and it's about rating and i have this you know this pattern that i want to use so what i'm going to do i'm going to come out here and put it over here inside the frame so you can clearly see that it's it's inside the frame and i'm going to sort of rotate it and probably shrink it and then sort of pull it over here until i like it um yeah and then maybe i'm going to duplicate it another time over here all right something like this right but the problem is i don't want and let's let's for example let's select these two items and then let's group them and let's sort of rotate them 
sort of bring them over here and move it to the bottom, right? And then let me change the opacity to like 30% or 40% or something. Uh, the problem is I've got a lot of these extra elements uh, over here. Um, now, now the reason you can't see it is let me change this to black um, or let me change it to this blue, right? So you can see these things. So we, but even though it's on the frame, we're not able to get rid of this. So all you have to do is select the frame and here click on clip content. That's it. That's super easy. And then now you can select that group that you have, and then you can move them around. You can, you can sort of change the color if you want. Um, whatever it is that you think you sort of have to do, you can scale it, you can do whatever it is, but because of clip content, it is going to clip over here. All right. So that's pretty much it. Those are all the main important shortcuts. Um, obviously you can come copy all these frames, which I have not edited and you can go ahead, paste it on your Figma file and uh, uh, try it out. Uh, watch the video again and try to practice along with me. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, so that because you have to do this once or twice for your fingers and your muscles to register this activity, um, cause that's the only way you can sort of work faster in Figma. If you come across any other shortcut, definitely let me know. Or if you have any questions on how you want to, uh, sort of design something, like if you feel you need a shortcut for something high chances there already is. So just DM me on discard and I will let you know. So hope you guys enjoy the video.